The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. Well, Karen Franson, thank you so much for um, spending the time uh, with us this afternoon. Um, I'm really excited to chat to you and to ask you um, about what you've been going, what what you've been doing, what's been going on over the last um, few months, and particularly your brand new EP, yeah. um, which on one hand was this year, but on the other hand must feel like quite a while ago now because so much has happened like since. Yeah, it feels like a, a totally different uh, time time period altogether. But it was um, it was seventh of March um, I released it and. Um, uh, yeah, I um, I don't know. It just we've gone into like a different time zone suddenly. But uh, it's it's been good in a way because Furlow let me actually spend a little bit of time and doing some fun creative um, videos and things like that for it. So yeah. had a bit more time to to focus on that, which was nice. That's cool. And you called it Commuter Diaries. Yes. Volume one. <laughs> because volume two is on the way. Yeah. Well, that yeah, it's a little bit of a cliffhanger there in the title. Oh, cool. like, I kind of wanted to allude to that there might be more coming, I'm hoping, because I'm constantly creating, so um, yeah, definitely. Nice, and how come you decided to call it Commuter Diaries? Um, it's just because I always, um, I often find myself uh, writing uh, when I'm on some public transport, oh, nice. and going somewhere, so it's kind of like where, where I gather my thoughts often, so I often get ideas for songs uh, when, I'm on, when I'm on a train or a tube or a uh, bus or something. I thought it's suitable. It's also suitable for the for the listener, maybe, because they can. That's kind of when you tend to listen a lot of the time. Yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, that that's kind of where that came from. I just thought it had a nice ring. So you release EP, and then pretty much we went straight into lockdown, like a couple of weeks later, which must have meant that um, promoting it would have been very different to normal and probably quite interesting. Like, what did you do to make that thing? Yeah, so, I mean, there's always, like, the the thing of making a big deal, obviously, out of an EP, once you put all that work into doing it, it took me about a year, maybe two years, or or a bit longer, <laughs> if I think about when I wrote the songs. So, um, obviously, it's quite important to try and, and plan, like, a big launch party. Like, when I did my album, I had a big launch party in, in one of the fun clubs in Soho. That was great. But I kind of just this time I just it took so so long to get to this point <laughs> that I was just like I'm gonna send it out there you know make a digital you know invite people online to kind of come and view it and then um, focus on making some videos and stuff so it was kind of like yeah I, I um I kind of just tried to make the most out of creating some content for it um once it was out there which is not how you're supposed to do it at all <laughs> but um it coincided nicely with the lockdown because that's kind of literally all you could do anyway so um so you didn't have to change your strategy at all? Um, I mean, yeah, I would have done some gigs. <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah. so. But do you know what, I did do, I, I did do a gig at the Ritzy in, in Brixton in February, which I used as like my announcement. So cool. I was announcing to my, 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 my friends. <laughs> oh, was that your last gig? Yeah. So, so that was good to get that in there. That, that timing worked out quite well. And what about the tracks? Like, how did you decide which ones to put on? Uh, were they written specific for the EP or? Um, it's, that's a good question. Um, I, um, I kind of wanted to focus on, on some of the, the material that's lesser known to people who actually come to my gigs and um, I kind of wanted to, to throw some new things on there. So, um, so for example, Slowly is one of the, the, the newest songs that I've written like in the recent time, which is, um, it's kind of like a little bit different to maybe in my other songs, um, a bit jazzier. Um, and then, and then, but then I've kind of mixed it up with some of the, some of the older songs. It's, it's kind of, I think I chose them a little bit with things that people hadn't heard me sing so much live, but also some of my favorite songs, like some of the songs I thought were my best. So yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of both on that.
The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. So did you go into the studio with an idea of what you wanted it to sound like? No, no, it was like, because I'm constantly writing. I was kind of going through my songs and I, I wanted to do like an album or a couple of EPs in the last, because my last release was in 2015. Okay. So I kind of been wanting to do something. And sometimes you get like so wound up trying to make, create the perfect thing. And it takes like a really long time and you like, you have to have time and money and people and, and all of those things. So I kind of just thought, you know what, I just, I want to, I want to complete the project. Um, but I want to kind of have something I can come back to, which has a theme. So hence the volume one again. So it's kind of like a project of just material. I, you know, I've played out a lot, uh, a lot live, um, which has gone down well. And I, I just think it would be a shame not to share it, you know, to put it, you know, to carry it on. Um, and you've also got a vinyl press, um, which, by the way, looks amazing. Do you um, have a lot of fans that um, still play a lot of vinyl? Because I know the divide is quite split. So this is a little bit cheeky here because um, that's what you're referring to from, probably from my Instagram is a yeah. prop. Oh, okay. um, so I, I would have liked to press some vinyl, but I've actually just gone full, full digital on this one. Cool. So, um, I would love to do vinyl. Um, vinyl. But again, like, you know, it's one of those, maybe when, when I get picked up by label, who can, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that I would love to do that. <laughs> um, you also launched two music videos in, this year, uh, one for Slowly and one for Sister Soul. And I was watching them and I was just wondering like why you chose those ideas for the videos. Um, and maybe also do you want to explain for people that haven't seen them um, like roughly what they're like? Yeah, so um, there's obviously there's four tracks on the, on the EP and I started um, launching the EP with the first track called Darling, which um, I, I did a video with like a, a cinematographer and it was uh, a really nice project. We did it at uh, like a fancy uh, mansion, slightly derelict mansion house. Um, we did a shoot in there, and um, he's got a great eye. Um, Robert Chilcott, he did that, and then that's kind of just like, yeah, that's that's a video. <laughs> and then I did the uh, Shallow Waters, which is the second song that I had a video for. Shallow Waters was um, it was a really fun project. So I asked all of my friends and my lovely family and um, got special people uh, if they would sing it. So if they would sing a line out of my song, Shallow Waters, yeah. and then I put it together. So it's all of like, like the lovely people uh, in my life uh, singing it. I think maybe 12 different people singing the song. So I kind of wanted it to be a bit more about the words and, you know, about the actual, the song, um, as opposed to me. But obviously I'm an artist. So then I did two more videos and then I'm in both of us. <laughs> so um, that takes me on to uh, Slowly, which is uh, one of the ballads where I've um, kind of um, performed it it's me singing the song, playing guitar, um, but actually doing it separately as how I recorded it. So when you're putting your tracks down, you obviously record the tracks separately well, a lot of the time. That's how I recorded it. Um, so that's kind of why I did the video in that way, because I wanted to reflect part, part of the recording video, uh, re the recording process. Um, and then Sister Soul is the final one where um, it's, um, it's me walking around a, a very lovely green luscious field in southeast London. Um, and um, there's some nice sort of drone shots and um, it's essentially me kind of singing the song to myself as I'm strolling. Uh, I think it's kind of how I saw the, the idea behind the song um, because that's sort of how it came about. So I thought it's suitable. That's kind of how I'm singing it to to the to this person or Let's go. 
The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. What about um, you at home? Um, what kind of artists do you listen to, especially during lockdown? So I actually, it's been very good for, uh, for, for listening to music lockdown, I found. Um, because I was doing a lot of um, online uh, promo stuff, <laughs> I actually happened to come, come across a lot of really amazing talent. Uh, I've been featured on a couple of playlists on Spotify, which has been oh. great. And that's actually, that's been a brilliant way to, to discover artists because they kind of have similar, I guess, similar vibe or something. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's this um, girl who I came across, I'm not entirely sure how, but her name is Emily King. And she's amazing. <laughs> she is really amazing. <laughs> like, it's very rare that, I, you know, you have a moment where you just, just, it's amazing. Like, she disturbed my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally just woke up and hear her song Georgia in the back of my head or um, Distance. Oh my gosh. Yeah, really good songs. But she's one of a, a few others I've been listening to. So yeah, it's been good for that. Cool. And what about um, inspiration? Like where do you get your inspiration from? For writing? Um, I think it's just uh, trivia and daily, you know, any any kind of they, any, anything that happens in my day in my day life, um, day life is that even the saying? Day life, <laughs> day life, <laughs> yeah. Just um, nature. I mean, nature has been really inspiring, especially uh, now that we've ha we had some time during lockdown to to sort of enjoy it. Um, so yeah, definitely nature, cherry blossoms, um, and uh, yeah, quiet walks, and um, yeah, I think that's been a big big part of it. Um, it's normally like traveling, but obviously at the moment it's not been so much traveling. It's been an in, inward journey, if anything. Have you like felt, felt under pressure to produce creatively in lockdown? I know a lot of musicians have. Um, do you know what? I think it's more the opposite. I found I didn't put any pressure on me to, to do it. And That's because right. the time was there, it was it was actually, I found it very very good for the creative juices in, in, in any sense. Like um, I've written two, I think two or three new songs, um, which I'm working on, um, but also in other creative ways, like cooking, baking, Absolutely. and all of that. I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like therapy, isn't it really? So. Um, and you also featured in the Women of Substance podcast, um, which I had listened to, which is quite cool. Um, and I wanted to ask you, because obviously, like, I've interpreted the title of the podcast to be, like, women who do awesome things, I guess. Um, but um, it led me to think about um, the Mercury nominations, which happened last week, um, and how, like, for the first time ever, we've had more women nominated than men nominated. And I wanted to ask, like, what your kind of feelings were about women in the music industry and whether you think the way they're being represented is improving and what people can do better, I guess. Well, I mean, um, to be honest, uh, that is great. I, di I didn't realise that that was the deal for yeah. the nomination. I haven't really followed that too much, but that's, that's great. I think that uh, I'm definitely just a pro, uh, you know, supporting anything which raises up women um, and, you know, where... Um, it do, am I seeing that it's changing? Um, I think I, I'm. I don't know actually. Um, I, I've always because I've been doing a lot of gigging in my time in London, and uh, there's always been you know reasonably well uh, representation in, in you know female singer songwriters like live. I would say, um, but I, I, I'm I'm not sure. Um, I think that it's probably slowly changing. I think there's probably more women out there, but yeah. Okay, if you were to get a phone call tomorrow, um, and the phone call said that you could play a gig anywhere in the world, at any venue, where would it be? It can be like a venue that you've played that you've really loved, or a venue that you haven't played before that you've always wanted to, or whatever. Oh, well, I mean, the Royal Albert Hall would be pretty smashing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd have to play there, yeah. Okay, and if you could collaborate with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be with? Um, well, I think you have to just um, live in the present, don't you? And so, therefore, I mean, I I think, I mean, Bob Dylan is a pretty awesome songwriter and inspiration in terms of 
you know, just continuing doing his thing. You know, he's just released an album which had really, I haven't listened to it yet, but it's had really good um, feedback and, you know, he's been doing it for some time. <laughs> I, find that very, <laughs> I find that very inspiring. He just does his thing, you know. So Bob Dylan at the Royal Albert Hall. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and if you could have a dream rider for this performance, um, what would be on this rider? On the ride, oh, <laughs> well, um, I think I'd like a masseuse. Okay. I... <laughs> cool. <laughs> and, um, and maybe a glass of champagne uh, and some water <laughs> and an apple, I think. Okay. <laughs> I reckon we can do that, that's fine. Yeah, okay, good, if you can work on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if people want to find out more about you, where can they go, what can they do? So um, I, I'm kind of most active probably on Instagram, uh, where it's, uh, you'll find me at Karin Franson Music. So Karin is spelled K-A-R-I-N, Franson, F-R-A-N-S-S-O-N, Music. Is that um, Swedish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Swedish. Um, and then the same is on Facebook, actually. So just the, the same, Karin Franson Music um, on Facebook. I've got a website as well, um, if you want to have a little have a little look around at some stuff I've done in the past um but yeah that's probably th those are the platforms I find more more interest I have more patience for cool well thank you so much for um spending the time and coming to chat with us and hopefully we'll be able to get you into the studio for a real session I want to say <laughs> cool thank you so much i